Welcome to Binary Jazz. Got it. <laughs> uh, a podcast uh, about... As I uh, lean back smugly. A podcast about uh, beekeeping. Um, uh, oh, hell yeah. Let's I, roll. I <clears throat> am here. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm Jesse. Comes on the internet. I'm here with my friends, Gary, who's Binary Gary on the internet, sometimes, I guess. Uh, and Allison, who's Allison Plus on the internet. What am I the rest of the time? I mean, oh, uh, I, sometimes I'm not on the internet. Yeah, that's right. I don't know how much we're on the internet anymore, which is sort of the funny thing. Um, not much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, sucks. except for the job thing, it's it's a net negative these days. The internet, the internet's awful. What are you even doing there? Uh, so, uh, Gary has some beekeeping, which is like housekeeping, but you know, with bees. I uh, <laughs> I was saying. Before we started recording, uh, that I went to my first beekeeping class last night, and then I was cut off immediately. Yes. Well, yeah, because uh, we want to hear about content. your beekeeping class. <laughs> Everyone wants to. Yeah, everyone. Um, it's, it's valuable content for the AI. It's it's great. The class is like five miles from my house, so perfect. I mean, it could not be any any better. And the, the beekeeping supply store it is like three miles from my house. Are you kidding me? Um, and it turns out that North Carolina has the most beekeepers per capita. All right, cool. Uh, and the county I'm in has the most beekeepers per capita in North Carolina. Rock and roll. Um, so you are so in I, literally the beekeeping center of the United States. Um, no, because climate matters. So, well, I guess maybe from a beekeeper perspective, yes, but from a bee perspective, no, bees aren't okay. really. Well, I didn't, I didn't say, best. I didn't say like the bee capital. I said the beekeeping. Yeah, capital. I know it's a little. One of the things I, I learned last night is there are no straight I've answers. Got so many follow up questions already. <laughs> yeah, I think you should start with those, and then I can share more. Um, first of all, are there beekeeping podcasts? You know what? I sure honestly don't know. Be. I'm a hundred percent certain there must be. Yeah, because the be. YouTube okay. uh, channel or YouTube are they called channels? What are they called? Shows? It's. Yeah, I hope it's called I the mean, latest buzz or something like that. Um, there. <laughs> Let's are get buzzy. <laughs> What's people, the buzz? People just strap a GoPro on their head and you can go inspect a hive with them. And wow. oh, did you see that? Oh, you have the little. How, thing. <laughs> how did it do that? It's just not doing it again. <laughs> what happened? I don't understand. It was just it, you were it, really feeling the love in that moment, and <laughs> it's it's a it's a new. Uh, and I probably can't do it because my gloves or something. It's a new um, hmm. Apple. Thing. I didn't even do that though. I, but it thought I did. Yeah, but and... it thought you did. <sighs> <laughs> Mine's just a broken heart. <laughs> it's the, it's the new M3 because it has some AI thing in the oh. camera or something. Um, so like if I do what? this, then it'll do. I've got the old. This is it's got to be a Zoom thing because this is. It's oh, is Zoom. it your computer doing it? It's your computer. No, no, it's a, it's a it's a computer thing. You don't have an I, M1, like or old, M2, or M3. Or I've something? got an M1. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it's it's yeah. Oh. It was probably part of an update. I didn't huh. have. It's only the M chips. It's only Apple. The Apple chips that that can do it. I love Apple chips. Um. So, uh, anyway, like South Georgia is where many, many, many bees come from. It's like climate's just great for them. Are there beekeeper conferences? Oh, yes. There's two state what events. What do you do? Days. I suggest Talk about bees. Does, do people bring their bees? Are there like trades? I don't think so. Generally because they're, I mean, just it's, yeah. I think people just, Gus, like when like requeening and things like that or maybe um, they're trading the honey because it's like specific to their flowers yes so um yeah, as part imagine. of I this i'm now a member of the county beekeeping association i paid my eight dollars last night so that's awesome. um that's all it takes anyone can join um yeah but they have a honey tasting every year the county does so all the beekeepers can bring in their honey everybody can taste each other's honey and discuss the coloration and the res the plants that cause that and it's yeah <clears throat> so it, it was like you know rolling my expectations were not very high because it's like it's like the uh meeting room of a church right and like okay uh it's it's pretty rural I'm like all right well we'll see what happens 
come rolling in there's like a few vehicles and i walk in and uh like they've got powerpoint slides set up they've got a dozen tables there's already a dozen and a half people there um there's like a lineup of people getting you through checked in for the class they hand you like a hardbound book and they hand you the printout of the powerpoint slide i should show you how big this is it's crazy this sounds better prepared than most like actual conferences and it, things i've been yes to. I, I was gonna look say yeah look at how sure. thick that is wow oh I mean, my this God. is like that's the slide. this is like Yes. So, so as you're going through, you can follow along at your table because they found that in years past, some people struggled to to see the slides or they wanted to take notes on the specific slide. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And and so this guy goes up last night and he's like walking through slides, but his second slide is like, you know, we're all just volunteers doing this. None of us are professional teachers. And then proceeded to give like the best lecture I've been to. Like he wasn't reading the slide. He was like talking about things. He was. Uh, engaging and humorous and able to answer questions on the fly and uh I, i'm like what <laughs> this apparently, is like apparently you found my... your place and it is with the bees maybe actually with the beekeepers maybe <laughs> i know so right cool. I'm like, oh, who, who would have yeah. thought they i don't know like because i would similar to you be expecting i don't know just not that and so so demographics of the people there i'm like oh man it's gonna be some like weird rednecks old, old and they people. were there uh old, no it was keepers. <laughs> it was so diverse I, actually I'm, I'm yeah blown away. Just, assuming assuming that it's just going to be old people is probably a misrepresentation it's probably a lot of I, I would also assume that there's a lot of like granola hippie types yeah yep yep i yeah yeah it, i was just it, i was just grinning the entire thing, time like, this, is which, this is so cool into which I think we would probably like this household would probably fall. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so cool, Gary. Good for you. So eight more classes and then uh and then we have field day. What's field? Same location. And that that people will be bringing bees too. Yes. So to like go do stuff in the hive that like as a class experiment thing. Um class yeah, brought... I mean Yes, you can um you can get like a state certification mm. test and some hands on stuff. So that's available for people that are interested in doing that. But the guy giving the presentation last was like last night was like, You can get certified, but the beasts don't care, they can't read. <laughs> are you kidding me? Like that joke kills. <laughs> <laughs> and and hopefully it didn't I kill mean, any bees though. <laughs> like I, these I mean some of the, some of these volunteers, like like the guy that owns the beekeeping shop as one of the volunteers who teaches the course you know okay makes great sense wonderful promotion but also like i mean they just they use all i mean the bee pun is like every third slide it's it's great you have to embrace it because oh other otherwise people will do it for you <laughs> i'm i'm here for it i yeah gary is happy to be here yes I, th I think that was like the second slide <laughs> or something like that. And then like talking I think, about like, I'd be more upset if they didn't careful. do bee puns. Yeah, I'd yeah, be like, I don't no. know what I paid my dollars for. <laughs> I I expected like a little more like, you know, but but no, I mean, these are people that do not take themselves very seriously. Um, they know a lot. Happy to talk about it. Don't take themselves too seriously. I'm like, yeah, this is this is my jam. So I, it, I don't, I'm not sure it's possible, honey. but I'm more excited. It is my honey. <laughs> See, you were cut out for this. <laughs> You're natural. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm more excited now than I was yesterday, which is pretty exciting because I was pretty excited yes yesterday. Is it once a week or once a week for nine total weeks? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And what will you ever do after the nine weeks? Well, I've already ordered bees, and so they arrive April the eighth. No, sixth. Eclipse is the eighth. They arrive the sixth. So the sixth, I'll pick up my bees and I need to have hives set up to. And you'll actually know get back. at that point, you'll actually know what you're doing, theoretically. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've read three books cover to cover at this point. And the area I'm most concerned about is managing, you know, disease and pests and stuff. Um, uh, but they're just like, 
you know, they're talking about like the different ways you can get started. You can buy a package of bees and like let the hive grow itself, or you can buy what's called a nucleus where someone's taking like a chunk of their hive and giving you, you know, basically an established hive. And they're like, the best way to learn is to buy a package, like, because then you get the entire experience of like what's going on. And, uh, and like, you know, there's no test at the end in this course. The test is what you do with the bees. The bees will test you. So like, it, it's so pragmatic and like, good luck, you know. Come ask questions. I feel like someone giving you a piece of like a chunk of their hive is like this weird blood pact. It feels like strangely <laughs> intimate. <laughs> like I'm like, who would I do that for? I don't know. I don't think I'd do it to, to anybody. <laughs> some of these some of these people are talking about like, oh, I've got um one of the volunteers, like I only have, you know, three hives right now, but at one point I had twenty seven. What? Um but most a lot of these these uh volunteers were like, yeah, you know, I have, you know, less than 10 hives or whatever, six or whatever on my property. And then I work hives here and here and here. So there's apparently like enough business uh, on the agricultural side where they need beekeepers to come and work hives that are then transported to, to fields to pollinate, hmm. which is pretty cool. We well, did... I um honey tasting at a farmer's market on salt spring island at their i guess it's weekly i don't know but this one lady had like five different honeys i didn't ask how many bees she had but or how many hives rather but each honey definitely tasted different it was amazing mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, does she because there was like, like a buckwheat a buckwheat honey right it was like this wildflower one right does she have the hives in different places like how does yes i don't know you have <laughs> to, yeah. i didn't get too much into it because also she kept yeah anyway you know salt spring is like very half dan <laughs> friendly <laughs> friendly that's the ep- that's the, the the episode title is Captain Friendly Friendly. Um, <laughs> better write it down before I forget. <laughs> uh, Gary, I feel like the B chapter is a new chapter for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Nice. Pretty stoked. Have they um, ever brought bees to space? Mm-hmm. Feels like a bad idea. <laughs> it does feel like a bad idea. Let's feel like a bad idea. Well, well, they did. T- they did mention transportation last night, and they talked about, uh, like, don't ever think that you should put them inside your vehicle, like in the hive. Like, if you're going to transport bees, like you need to have a container specific to transporting hives. Or not, you're getting like a little bit of a bump, and now you've got angry bees, and the hive has shifted. So that in feels like something that's, o- that's obvious, but yet something that a lot of people would probably be like, "I'm sure it'll, it'll be fine." <laughs> In 1984, a NASA experiment like sent honeybees into space aboard the space shuttle Challenger during the STS 1341C mission. The purpose was to study how bees would construct honeycombs in microgravity. The oh, bees adapted to the that. conditions and built their comb, but the method of building was notably different from how they would on Earth, demonstrating the effects of microgravity on biological organisms. The experiment was part of a series of investigations into how living creatures adapt to space conditions. So yes, bees okay. have been in space. Huh. There's there's the confluence of of Gary's interests. I'm just <laughs> curious <laughs> what what website gave you that answer? Uh, ChatGPT. Okay. I I asked, have bees ever gone to space? I want to Google it and see. I most things like because... that, I, I don't generally have any reason to doubt, and if I do, I'll be like, hey, can you do a google uh bing search to validate your data and it will do that i've definitely asked for references i'm like can you back any of these claims up (laughs) no i i um i recently worked on the animals in space page for history Mm. um and i didn't notice bees on there but i was not looking at the content but now i want to be like hey uh, but now you know a mission to look for yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna ping her after this and be like, "Hey, this is really interesting, and we're not showing up in the top search results. So, can you make a page about bees in space?" <laughs> bees oh. in space. That's exactly what I was thinking. 
He's in space. <laughs> when you said challenger, I froze for a moment. And I'm like, oh man. So not that they challenger. didn't get there. Yes. Well, no, I it was that challenger. Thing, it was yeah. before. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, last weekend was the um, uh, was Day of Remembrance. So late January is the anniversary of Apollo One uh, Challenger in Columbia. Late January is a a bad time to travel to or from space. Apparently, um, yeah. So there's a tidbit for you. Well, my my jam is sixty thousand, sixty five thousand words, in. Wow. Ish. Wow. And how the long Google the Google it? the Google document has more than two hundred pages now, which is the biggest Google document I have ever created. How does so that? Wait, when work? when was your official like kind of start date? Like how many months have you been working on? This? Uh, it was sometime late November. Okay. Wow, that's. A lot. I, I wrote about like. I wrote. Hefty I wrote like. Road. Like eighteen thousand words in like three days or something. There's like three days where I like just sat and wrote a lot. And then it's been like regularly about a thousand words. I try to, I try to write every night for a little bit. So I write like somewhere in the range of like a thousand words, yeah. except the days. Does days. your brain feel emptier or better after you've like, <clears throat> like, does it no, feel like you have less like things you're keeping track of in your head now that it's on paper? Um, things i'm keeping track of my head uh um, no <laughs> um because a lot of the time because mostly the the writing that i do is like sort of time constrained so it's like it's whatever i can churn out in the time that i have and so i still have ideas about like you know where i like what i want to do next so and that i didn't get to so then like like each night i'm like okay i need to rewind where was i okay where was i going okay um, but I, I do like, I'm, I'm, I'm in the part where it's like, like if this was, um, if this was fear and loathing in Las Vegas, it would be like getting into like the road trip, drug trip things, <laughs> like where stuff actually starts happening and things start getting close to the conclusion ish. I don't know why I made a fear and loathing in Las Vegas reference. Like that doesn't. Yeah, have you really... watched that recently? Or... No. <laughs> I think it's just because that's like, a weird pull for you. <laughs> well, it, so I guess it's because they're like my my characters are, are like going on this massive road trip after breaking out their friend from a conversion therapy center, um, and so now it's like going off into the into the Nevada desert, and I'm planning on possibly like a drug trip uh, experience when they get there. All right. So I think that's where the fear and loathing in Las Vegas came. <laughs> Um, how does Google deal with 200 pages? Badly. Is it slow? Yeah. Um, yeah, what, what I'm thinking now, like what I kind of came to the conclusion of recently, I haven't done it yet, but I was thinking that like, um, so as far as, as when you create a, a, a chat bot a ch in chat GPT, <clears throat> You create, you can upload files and it uses the files as knowledge. And when I first did it, I was like uploading all of my notes so that it would sort of have reference to things that I was thinking about and give suggestions based on that. Now I've got, and then I was just updating like the main document whenever I do it. And now it's like a massively large document, a single document. And then there's a bunch of other sort of supplementary things. But at this point, it almost feels like the supplementary things are less important and that it, it might be more valuable to break like the the massive manuscript into like chapters and upload them up separately so it has sort of separate contexts for each like mm -hmm. you know section um but i haven't done it um but that's like if i was going to go and like spend some time to sort of rebuild or re refiddle with the um the 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 chat bot configuration that's probably what i would do i'm 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 I th I'm also like not really using it to get ideas anymore that much. I'm mostly using it for like, like, like the conversion therapy center. Like, what's a what's a name for a center that would be for rehabilitation and also subversively conversion therapy? Um, and it just 
came up with a name and I was like, cool, that's the name that it's going to be. Um, and it was like, it came up with Harborview, which is funny because like, I was thinking of like where I wanted to put it in San Francisco, which is like, has no view of oh. any Harbor, <laughs> um, yeah. which is hilarious to me. And I want to keep that in because like, it's really just dumb. Um, <laughs> and, uh, like an Harborview, like wellness and therapy or some bullshit like it's like a really like stupid title um that sounds legit um and then i also asked it like because i was i was trying to figure out like so i have a character uh in the story he, he doesn't appear in the story but there's discussions about him who uh invented this like programming language that uses that like pulls in like magic and uses the um like build the hardware that like channels the magic to make it actually do a thing and then when he basically realized what he did he kind of sent himself into exile uh in the nevada desert and the the urban legend is that he bought himself a bunker and just like lives inside of a bunker and and never uh never so i was like where in the nevada desert would this bunker be and it's like the nevada test site where they tested nuclear bombs i'm like okay that's where we're going <laughs> I I guess that makes sense if you think bunker in Nevada. Mm -hmm. That 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 seems logical. Yeah. Um I had in my head for some reason when you said Harbor View, before you said San Francisco, I thought the setting was in Nevada. And no. I was thinking Harbor View Nevada. Yeah, that's even better. That's even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like any kind of like tree, you know, like Yeah. I don't know, Myrtle Place or I don't know. Yeah, like and I'm not, I didn't Oakmont. even like, and it even, even in asking the AI, like where would a good location for this be? Like it wasn't, it's not my intent to actually name the place, but I will, like, I do want to have in my head, like the route that they take so I can describe like, you know, how they get there kind of like, I know. Yeah how to get to various places in california and nevada because i've driven through them i haven't been to the nevada test site um but like i kind of know yet. like the I, right yet i, I kind of know like the route that that you could take and like what those highways look like and i want to like have in my head like like you know are they going over the bay bridge or the golden gate bridge are they bypassing the bridge entirely and going south and going you know like like how would they how would they actually travel yeah. there and at, at what point do they like get out of like civilization and just like are out into rural california or something Um, I had a question and I didn't want to interrupt, which is not like me at all. Um, gasp, and I lost it. <laughs> that that part feels more on brand. Yeah, that that's, that's very on brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, now I well, just um, now I just it it does okay if I like if I like copy paste like a chapter and say hey. How's this chapter we're doing and how's it compare with the previous chapters and stuff like it? And I've actually like added instructions to say, like, when I ask for feedback, this is the type of things I want you to look at. Um, and it seems to follow those rules. I made it, I made a public uh, chat bot the other day. Um, it's actually, yeah. it, was, it was actually your, uh, your WordPress question, Allison, that made me think, Hey, is there a WordPress bot? If not, like, because I was just like, basically, I took I took your code snippet and I just dropped it in chat GPT and said, what does this do? And are there bugs with this? Um, yeah. And, and oh, it, oh, we're there. <laughs> and, it, and it told me what it did. And it said, you know, it seems legit, basically. And like, okay. So then I was like, well, like, instead of just asking chat GPT, it seems like there should be a way to like ask a chat GPT that is specifically focused on WordPress. So I was like, I'm going to make a GPT that's WordPress developer assistant. So yeah, there's now a, there's now a public GPT that's called WP developer assistant. I think that's authored by me. There was a bunch of others that were already there. Um, I don't know if mine is better, worse. Well, we will say that it is. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I said, look for docs on the developer site and WordPress dot, uh, stack overflow or whatever um for stuff and and the really important thing is if you don't know the answer to a question don't answer it just say you don't know 
Yeah, like, don't, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I mean, that's the problem. That's the biggest problem with AI is when it doesn't know it, it makes something up. Um, yeah, well, that's the problem with a lot of people. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> But I've but seen the, it like I've the, seen it I've seen it invent like WordPress APIs and functions and stuff like oh yeah. this exists surely. It definitely but, did that with me, and I was like, oh wow, is there a filter that? <laughs> and I was like, no, no, you literally just made this up. Yeah, I'm like looking in the docs, being like, oh, what, what do I pass into this? So that I'm just like, just nothing. It's it's a figment of your imagination. Yeah, those are great um, plugins then. You know, like that kind of ridiculous filter. Mm. Chat GPT thinks it should exist, so it should exist. Yeah. Surely. Somebody get on that. <laughs> oh, I know what I want to talk about. Remembered. It's you, totally non sequitur. You looked like you had Before a thought. It. Was... it um, I, I was I was mumbling over earlier. Bees are the sixth. Eclipse is the eighth. There's a whole class about weather, and I can't wait to dig in and understand. Like I wish, I wish the I was a year ahead of where I am, so I really understand what I'm seeing. But what what are the bees going to do when the, when the eclipse comes? Mm. How I mean, ah, <sighs> guess you'll find out because you'll have bees. Oh wait, you won't find I won't. out because you won't be there. Right, I'll be somewhere else. You'll be somewhere else. Yes. I originally was going to do the thing where, like, book a hotel outside of totality mm -hmm. and then have flexibility to say, where am I going to yeah. drive in? But but then I was like, you know what? Like, best case scenario, I can book a hotel in totality. Right. And we could just walk and not have to worry about, like, fighting traffic afterwards when people are heading back because apparently that's mayhem. So, um, Yeah. That's my plan. Yeah, last time there was a full, uh, a, a total eclipse. Um, we booked. Uh, it was it was actually Aaron's dad who booked us a campsite um, in Idaho, um, in totality, um, for like a week. So we just spent a week up there, going to like it was like by. Bleh. I was by, I don't remember what river it was by, but it was by some river where there's lots of salmon. Um, so you went to like the river. Let's call it Salmon Creek. Sure. Um, and Cypress we, Springs. We went, we went rafting on the river. Um, we went to the lake. Uh, and then, view. And, um, and then when the day came, we just like sat in our camp chairs and had our little glasses That's and nice. looked up, looked up in the sky. Was this that, the, was this the last one back in October? No, it was several years ago. 15, uh, 15 years. Oh, no, 17, 2017. Yeah, that sounds right. Yep. I, um, you know, in preparation for this, there's like an expectation that our website traffic is going to be significantly higher, which is accurate. Um, but looking at the metrics that they had from the last one, it was like a 10x uh, increase in traffic. Um, I can't imagine that will be the case this time since... They're kind of just that kind of just happened in 17 and then Western population last year. You know, I mean, it hits some major population centers, but it's not like when it, the last one where it went, you know, right across DC, you know, mm. not that last one, 17. With that wonderful picture of Trump staring at the sun. Jackass. <sighs> That was a deep sigh for <laughs> anyone who's not. Do you watching. feel about the United States like most of the United States feels about Florida? Thoughts, feelings. <laughs> yeah, um, but see, the thing is, the thing is that with Florida, most people who don't live in Florida can write it off as like that's funny and not my problem. I feel like yeah, Canada. Al can't Allison, do that. Allison. Well, and Allison being dual citizen, like it still kind of is. I would imagine your problem, even when it's not. Yeah, like I can still vote in presidential elections. 
oh no this is my circus and these are my monkeys <laughs> yeah I'm like, oh no also what happens in america like whether or not how much people want to um admit to it really affects canada's politics and yeah. there's like direct correlation um on how vocal certain groups are if or if not. you vote in u.s elections what state records your vote is it the state oh, california it, so it's the state that you the state that i was a last like a, a resident last resident okay yeah i was gonna say like mm -hmm. like where do those votes go i know <laughs> honestly <laughs> i i every time i get some sort of ballot i'm like i don't understand how this works part of me doesn't even know if it is working yeah. but i'm gonna keep sending in my vote oh. but you can't you can't vote on like state stuff no just no the federal stuff yeah. and just, just presidential and I can't, um you can't vote for i can't oh, vote in the primaries because i don't yeah. i'm not a declared uh anybody you're, you're not a you don't have a party yeah a u.s party presumably you have a canadian party maybe um no no i mean i guess like secretly i do but i mean not secretly but like it's like not i'm not registered. a declared party member of, i'm not registered anywhere yeah is that is that a requirement in canada yeah not that i know of i um, mean i think it is if you're like in parliament or like if you're yeah. really and in, really involved in politics obviously but i don't i don't i always remember the ecology party in florida hmm. ecology party which i just wanted to be a member of like some minority party honestly is it like the green new... party or is it something else um i'm not clear yeah <laughs> i i <laughs> not clear i was a member of a number of silly uh down the list parties uh in california um and then I moved to Utah, and uh, the majority of those don't exist, and the Democrats have such a big problem doing it, getting anything done. So I registered as a Democrat, even though, like, yeah. like that, that was my. I logic mean, if, if there was going to be a thing to 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 do, like, yeah, because I like registering green in Utah isn't going to help anyone. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was registered that... green for a couple years. So there was no Green Party in Florida, at least when I to register they what would have Nader do or something i i mean i i guess he maybe maybe he just didn't care about florida because he wasn't gonna get votes there anyway well i think it came and went in florida i don't know what, i don't know what the regulations are in florida and keeping a party yeah going yeah number of registered I, well yeah i, no I think idea. i think our, i think our green party fizzled actually in the last couple of years so yeah that's a thing yeah and like okay i mean here we are. Speaking of green, how's your uh, Prius working? It's working. It's working better than it was before. What was the resolution? It I was. Remember that it, it, it was either going to be something easy or something like that cost a billion dollars. Yeah. So it was. One billion dollars. Um, For our <laughs> it was. Uh, it was essentially the coolant that goes that that is used to sort of cool the battery um yeah there the hose was basically like melted so like i think the battery was just over overheating it wasn't able to get cooled so that's why it was just oh. like power down and that's why at yeah. a certain point at a certain point it just started working again i mean not started working it, at, at a certain point it stopped working because then it couldn't get any like it just wasn't able to make the connections at all I can't remember exactly, mm. but I, it, that's 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 what I my memory of it is is what happened. So it was fairly inexpensive. It was a hose replacement. Um. Well, it was a hose replacement, but it was one of those hose replacements that you have to like take a whole bunch of shit. Turn out. the car upside down. To, right. Exactly. To it, yeah. So it was not super inexpensive. It was actually rather, but I mean, it was that it was cheaper than getting a new car. Yeah. And he's I, like, that's he's what like, I tell myself today. We're doing struts on the van today. He's he's like, uh, it's got like sounds like a much cooler part than it actually is. It's got like a hundred and fifty thousand miles on it, I think. And he's like, you yeah. should get to two hundred to two hundred fifty easy with this, like with like this is this is fine. You know what happens to two hundred fifty? It blows up. No, you've gone the distance from the Earth to the Moon. Oh, okay. 
I'm, I'm holding out for that one with my old blue car. I don't want to get rid of that thing until I've until it's kind of just travel to the moon. I mean, I've only had it for a few years. We're so. we're definitely going to it's travel a, to the moon. It's travel to the moon. It, it, it's definitely going to have traveled to the. We're definitely going to travel to the moon in our CRV before we travel to the moon in the Prius. I need if, to if traveling, if traveling to the moon, I should just take a, that blue card to watch the eclipse. There's some free miles. If traveling to the moon is a measure of distance, then I'm gonna have to see how many kilometers we have in our car. I have no idea. And then you'll need to do the conversion. And then I'll need to do the conversion because <laughs> you're traveling yeah. to the moon will be different. <laughs> is it closer? Is the moon closer to Canada? <laughs> yes. It's closer when you're in kilometers. <laughs> That's what I figured. Yeah. The math is easier, at least. Is it? Well, yeah. I think it's actually the opposite, but anyway. <laughs> the math is harder? We can stick, we can stick with it. <laughs> well, well, no, I mean, it's, it would be more kilometers than miles. I get that part. But yeah, okay. it, it's like all divisible by tens and hundreds. And well, well yes. To that, that miles oh, I see. Where, yeah. You know. What's yes, miles and feet? But the 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 math the math for converting kilometers to miles is not any easier. Mm -hmm. No, it's probably no. I've been no. doing a lot of uh, uh, converting dollars to yen because I have well, no. Oh concept. yeah, that's I exciting. have no concept of the conversion rate. Yeah, <laughs> no, I would I have I, concept that's... of the conversion rate. Other than that, a thousand yen is not a lot of money. <laughs> it's about, it's about yeah, you don't have to get immediate sticker shock you can just be like okay let's just figure out some of this math <laughs> That's so here's my thought process um uh a 5k is 3.1 miles okay so 3.1 to let's just let's just 31 to 25 that's six so about one sixth so it would be 430,000-ish kilometers. Now I'm curious how close that is, like using bullshit estimation. <laughs> that was that was the most napkin math. <laughs> yeah. How many kilometers away? Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.